Hello and welcome back to Holding On Talking Brother. This is the Sunday Post and my name is Joe Greenwood. Uh, we will be reviewing the, the night before uh, the Saturday night fights that happened. Uh, we'll start off in the UFC with their fight night from the uh, uh, from the apex. Uh, no, Jesus. God, I wish they just really wish they could just give up on that place. But they won't. They won't. Anyway, let's start with that main event. Nazardin Imavov defeats Roman Delize by majority decision, not unanimous decision. One judge had it 47-47 on the cards, which is very odd. Um, I thought this was a quite clear Imavov win. I had him winning uh, four rounds to one. Uh, him having a 10-8 in the first. Delize getting a 10-8 in the fourth uh, due to the points deduction on Imavov. I guess you get that 47-47 if you don't give Imavov the 10-8 in the first and you give Delize another round with the 10-8. I really don't see where you get that from, to be honest. But that's just me. Um, yeah, I thought this was a very solid performance from, from Imavov. Um, I thought he... Um, I think, first off, he ex kind of exposed Roman Delize as being very limited. Um... And really, that should have been uh, really proven when Imavov had his fight with Vittori. And Vittori, who is a limited fighter, showed how limited he was. So, on the feet, it wasn't really much of a contest. I mean, Imavov kept landing this like really lovely long right hand onto uh, Dalidze. His kicking game was really solid. This sort of like um, push kick to the stomach. That was really lovely. Um... And you had also Imavov's uh, elbows on the brakes. I mean, Delizia, whenever he got anything going, was... Well, he kept... I say he got things going. When he got things going was in the fourth and the fifth, when he was kind of desperate and he needed to get something. And he just started, like, attacking subs, just, like, from anywhere. And it's just like, okay, he's got something here. He's got, like, solid attacking grappling. It's just that, like, his punches... Really, all he has is like a clubbing right hand. Like his his strikes were so wide and loose and off balanced, and you know, Imovov, if he just stayed upright and threw straight, he would get through that. You know, if you're kind of like winging these huge right hands, the arc of the shot is so much longer compared to the straight shot. And if you're willing to sort of stay in there, wait for him to throw, and then throw a straight shot down the middle, you're going to have repeated success. Because you know, if he's Imavov's in orthodox. He kept switching, but I say he's in orthodox. That's where I, you know, that right hand I thought was particularly good, and the lead hand left hook was good as well. Um, you know, you throw the jab as he's winging this huge right hand, and then when you bring the jab hand back, you can protect your head from the right hand that's coming from Delize, and you can land your own right hand of yourself. I mean, yeah, I thought that it was a pretty clear, comfortable win for Imavov. The only notable thing was the points deduction in terms of, like, contentiousness. Um, you know, it was that thing of Imavov was on the back and then Delize bent at the waist and put one hand down. Imavov had a look, but he looked from over Delize's left shoulder and then he couldn't quite see if the hand was down. He thought it was up um, and he threw a head kick from that position. He threw a lovely head kick as well earlier in the fight from sort of similar position but Delize wasn't bent over it was a sort of kick where like it was a sort of position where normally you'd throw like an elbow but he threw like a left high kick instead it was really really well done from Imovov um, anyway going back to the point of deduction yeah um, Delize had put his hand down and he threw the head kick and point of deduction from there and then he had a bit of an argument with Chris Curtis where obviously they had had the fight that was um, stopped due to a clash of heads so he got a bit of beef there um, yeah, I, I have to say, like, this bending over at the waist and just putting your hand down and looking at the ref going, like, my hand's down is very dirty behavior in my mind. Like, that's, that's dirty. Like, we know what you're doing. You're trying to neutralize the position. You're trying to bend the rules. It's not a natural position that you've put yourself in. Like, a natural position there would be to be upright and you're trying to, like, just pummel your hands through the grip. But instead, he bent over at the waist to put his hands down to make it a neutral position. I mean, if anything, why didn't he just, like, roll through 
you know, and get underneath and try and get a leg entanglement because that's something that he went for in the fifth and he actually started to get somewhere. Tried to go for a toe hold. It wasn't really close, but again, he showed that he could go into that realm. And yeah, just very odd performance from um, Delize in that regards. And I'm, I'm, I hope that vote goes through to get rid of that downed hand, get the hand down sort of position. I hope that goes through and that's gotten rid of because it's it's nonsense. It's nonsense. Needs needs to a grounded opponent. I think are fine. It would change the the game up, and you won't just have people like crouching there with their hands down, trying to like. I don't even know what they're trying to get to. Like, because once the hand comes up, they're going to strike you. So what? You're just pausing. You know, it's just very odd. I'm I'm not not a fan of it. Not a fan of it at all. Co-main event. Interesting performance here from Hanato Moicano. Um, he gets a. Uh, a uh, unanimous decision win over Drew Dober, 29-28. Fair enough. Um, Moicano got rocked in the first, and he was like, oh, I've got to take this guy down, uh, which he correctly did. And then he just stayed in half guard. Like, he stayed in half guard in the first. In the second, he, he got him down, but Dober got up, finally got, like, the hip escapes and pushed off and got up from there. And... Um, yeah, and then whenever it was on the feet, Dober was rocking Moicano. Like, Drew Dober won that second round for me. He got that really cool lateral drop where Moicano was pushing into him in the clinch. And Dober sort of twisted and turned around and took Moicano down from there and landed some really lovely ground and pound shots. I think there was a moment where Mark Smith was pointing to the eye, but I think he was indicating that the cut came from a clash of heads and not a strike, which is a point of reference that goes to the uh, the doctor and the judges. Um, yeah, interesting moment there because you know that was the most significant looking damage of the whole fight. Uh, but Moicano, you know, he he chose position over submission in this fight. Like he probably could have got Dober out of there, but I think he was kind of just like uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like you're sort of like riding the bull. Do you know what I mean? Like the um, oh bloody hell! Like you know in America, uh, like the rodeo bull riding. Like he was just like I'm just going to ride Dober out here. Um, and it happened in the third where like after 10 seconds Mark Smith the referee was like right you gotta keep working it's just like he's literally just got down there and I think Mark Smith was kind of like I know what you're doing and that's fine and I'll allow you to do it for a little bit but you gotta like work as well Um, which is fine I mean he kept them he left them down there but he just made sure that there was constant action there was constant scoring happening and uh, yeah Moicano gets the win uh, ranked number 11, uh, Dober at 15. They should both stay in the rankings. I think Dober is a really tough proposition at 15 for like someone to get through, like someone outside of the rankings, or even someone in like the sort of 11 to 15 range, just sort of Jalen Turner types. Yeah, that is, um, that's a tough entry into the rankings. And Dober, it's, I still think he's got potential to climb from there. I just think that his... His willingness to swing it out is going to get him caught out by the better fighters. And then particularly also when you get to that sort of middle range and you're facing guys like Gamrot. And even RDA to a certain extent. I mean, you know, I think a guy like RDA probably could take Dober down. I know RDA's in the rankings and he's facing Gamrot. Um, and I know RDA said that he wants to fight out his contract at 170. Just fight and perform as well as he can. But he seems like he's willing to go between the two. Um... I think Dober would struggle with guys like that. As for Moicano and what he could face next, I mean, maybe a Benil Dariush, maybe someone like that. That could be an interesting one. Um, I would favour Dariush in that matchup, uh, to be honest. Um, right, and before that as well, there was a really good performance from Randy Brown, who utilised the double jab, angled off, and got a lovely right hand knockout of Muslim Salikov. Um, Really solid from Randy Brown. And again, showing that the double jam should be the main thing that fighters should be learning now in the same way that the calf kick was a few years ago. You know, I think um, I think that, that that is severely underutilized within the space of MMA, uh, the double jab, and even within boxing as well. Like, more guys should be double jabbing, feinting the jab, feinting the double jab as well. Um, particularly in close, you know, to set up the bigger hands and to... to set of the bigger shots I should say um, and to push their opponents back but Randy Brown got it lovely, really angled off nicely as well Was he caught him at an interesting angle sort of like, it's almost like perpendicular to him 
sort of like it was like almost like the right hand sort of like slashed across him. Um, yeah, really good, really good. And again, set up because of the double jab, double jab, everyone. That's what you should be doing. Um, right, I actually want to move over into the world of boxing. Josh Buatzi defeats um, uh, Ben Aziz uh, in the light uh, heavyweight division. Um, basically, this was to set up who's going to face um, Anthony Yard, um, who then you will then face the winner of potentially um, Dmitry Bivol versus. Uh, Arto Betabiev. Um you know, I, I that's from what I saw of these fights of Aziz and Buatsi, I don't see either of them beating uh Betabiev or Pivol. Like I think that that's fair enough. Um you know, I thought Buatsi was um hold on, hang up that call. Um I thought Buatsi looked pretty slick and solid, but he kept for me when I scored it, when it got into like round eleven I had it level because each time Buatsi would go two rounds up, and Aziz would pull him back, you know, and Aziz finally, like, realised, like, I can't really stay on the outside of this guy, I've got to come inside, I've got to have my arms up, and I've got to be in hooking range, and I think when they got, when they got into the hook battles, like, I sort of favoured Aziz's big shots, but you go into round 11, and Aziz is pushing forward, and I'm like, man, I think Aziz is winning this round, he's starting to take take over, he's starting to push Buatsi back, Buatsi's, like, doing this sweet little technical work, nice uppercuts, jabs, <laughs> But it's not really landing anything. And then the ring had been quite slippery. They actually toweled it down. I think after round like seven. Um, and Buatsi lands this right hand. And Aziz. It looked like he slipped after the right hand. And it was scored as a knockdown. And I was just like oh man. Like he's just lost this round. He might have lost the fight because of that. So then Aziz goes charging in. He's got to try and get something back. He's got to get it back. He's got to try and knock Buatsi down now. He's got to score some damaging shots. He's got to try and get the momentum back. And then he gets knocked down again in the 11th. Sp- spun around and knocked down. Um, I was just like, ugh. Crushing feeling to see him go down like that. Uh, and Mbuatsi cruises in the end to a unanimous decision victory. I thought some of the scoring was way off. I thought it was a lot closer than was given on the scorecards. Um, I thought Buatsi landed some really nice work, but I've preferred the power punching of Aziz in some of those rounds, particularly the close rounds. Um, yeah, and I thought, you know, Dan Aziz gave himself, like, a really good credit. Um, yeah, just a bit of a shame he came up short. You know, I like that sort of style that he had of marching forward into the inside range, got inside of um, Buatsi's long shots, and sort of hooked from there. Um, but but why he looks solid? He looks solid. I think, you know, if he faces Anthony Yard, he needs to step it up a little bit. I don't think he can sort of dance on the outside against someone like Yard, who can more likely just sort of like pulverise you and come through you. If you want to see a good example of Yard, I mean, even in defeat, his fight against Arta Betabia, if you should watch it, probably the fight of the year for last year, uh, in my humble opinion. I, you know, I thought that fight was absolutely incredible. Absolutely just blood and guts and thunder. And it's just Yard, who wasn't on the level of better be of emptying the tank and trying his best to get him out of there. And landed a lovely right hand in that fight where better be of then turned it round on him in that red. I think it was like round five of that fight. But that'll be an interesting test for Buatsi. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Just a very quick Sunday post. I d- not a lot of meat on the bone in that UFC card, in my opinion. I thought Delice was pretty much shown up to be not that... He's not of the level. And I think Imovov um, looked like he'd improved... Um, quite a bit to be honest and I thought I was quite impressed by his performance um, anyway thank you so much for joining me you can contact us at holdonbrother69 at gmail.com like subscribe leave a comment and uh, I'll be back probably next week with another, another Sunday post talking about the Joe Pfeiffer Jack Hermanson card yeah I know me too uh, yeah see you later bye bye uh, enjoy your Sunday <laughs>